I believe rights can come in conflict with each other. I, right to contract, and right to free speech. Yes, it is true that in some cases, rights can come into conflict with each other. For example, the right to free speech and the right to privacy can sometimes come into conflict in cases where someone's private information is being disclosed through speech. Similarly, the right to bear arms and the right to public safety can come into conflict in cases where gun ownership is associated with increased risk of violence. In such cases, it is up to the legal system to determine which right should take precedence in a given situation. Well, in the case of right to contract and free speech, you can sign a ended A or a contract that says you can't talk about, say, a recipe you were given. That seems to conflict with free speech. Yes, that's a good example. Non-disclosure agreements and other contracts that restrict speech can certainly come into conflict with the right to free speech. However, it's worth noting that there are often legal limits on the extent to which such contracts can be used to restrict speech, particularly in situations where the speech is related to matters of public concern or where the contract is seen as unreasonably restrictive. The precise contours of this balancing act between the right to contract and the right to free speech are still the subject of ongoing legal debate and interpretation. Well, I simply in those scenarios ask which right is more fundamental. That's a good question. Generally, when there is a conflict between two rights, courts will try to balance the competing interests and determine which right should prevail based on the facts of the case and the principles of law. In the specific example you mentioned, the right to free speech is considered a fundamental right protected by the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. While the right to contract is not explicitly mentioned in the Constitution, but is protected under common law. In this case, if a court were to determine that the right to free speech is more fundamental, it might invalidate the contract or NDA on the grounds that it unreasonably restricts the individual's freedom of expression. On the other hand, if the court were to determine that the right to contract is more fundamental, it might uphold the NDA or contract as a legally binding agreement between the parties. Ultimately, the outcome of any given case will depend on the specific facts and legal principles involved, as well as the interpretation of the relevant laws and precedents by the courts. I would personally say that the right to contract is more fundamental because it is the basis of all trust in society, whereas speech, while important, is more important on an individual level. That's an interesting perspective. Others may argue that the right to free speech is more fundamental because it allows for the free exchange of ideas and is necessary for a functioning democracy. It ultimately comes down to individual values and beliefs about the role of government and society. Well, that, and you can ask, imagine a world where one right existed and the other didn't. Would it make sense? In the case of the right to contract and free speech, both rights are necessary for a functional society. The right to contract allows for individuals and businesses to enter into agreements and create relationships based on trust while free speech allows for individuals to express their thoughts and ideas freely, which is essential for the exchange of information and the development of knowledge, without the right to contract. Businesses and individuals would not be able to operate and function in society. And without free speech, individuals would not be able to express themselves and engage in the free exchange of ideas. Therefore, both rights are fundamental and necessary for a functional society. Well, I point out like this, if you had the right to contract but not the right to free speech, you'd still have trust in society and contracts can give benefits to outweigh what's lost. Whereas if you have free speech without the right to contract, your speech is meaningless because there's nothing to really put them to. That's an interesting perspective. It does highlight the importance of the right to contract in facilitating economic exchange and promoting trust in society. However, some might argue that the right to free speech is equally fundamental as it enables individuals to express themselves, share ideas, and hold those in power accountable. Additionally, the right to free speech is enshrined in many national constitutions and international human rights instruments, which suggests that it is considered a fundamental right by many. Ultimately, the relative importance of these rights may depend on the context and the specific circumstances of a given situation. Being able to express and share ideas really doesn't matter that much if you don't have some level of trust between you and your audience, which would be established through social contracts. That's a good point. The ability to freely express and share ideas is important, but it is also important to have a level of trust and cooperation in society in order for those ideas to be effective and have an impact.
social contracts and agreements, such as the right to contract, play a role in establishing that trust and cooperation, which in turn can support the freedom of speech. Without that trust and cooperation, the freedom of speech may not be as effective in achieving its 